What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 37 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about trading with NPCs. First, we're going to look at some basic trades, and then some more advanced trades, and then we're going to look at people just outright giving you Pokemon. So, that's not a trade, but we're going to look at it anyway. With that said, let's get into it. So, what I've done here is I've made a new town, and I've got some NPCs here all lined up. So down here, these are the two traders. This guy right here is the basic trade. Let's pop him open and take a look. So essentially, this guy says, hey, I want a Ratatata. I'm going to give you a Haunter. Do you want to trade? Um, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, you get a Gengar out of it after all. Um, so if you say yes, here's what happens. What it does is it first runs a script function called PB choose Pokemon for trade. And the way that this function works, you shouldn't have to edit it too much, but essentially the way it works is it stores um, a value in variable one and a value in variable two. The value in variable one is the index of the party member that you've chosen. So you don't worry about editing this too much. This is just kind of like some of the more technical stuff. And then the Pokemon's name goes in variable two. So those won't need to be edited. What will need to be edited is this third value in the function, which is the species of the Pokemon that you want to trade. So instead of typing in Ratatata, you could type in Onyx or, you know, Shuckle. Whatever you put in here is the Pokemon that the guy will want to receive. So right now he wants to receive a Ratatata, but we can change it so he'll be asking for a um, Machamp. So now he will only trade if we give him a Machamp. So I should also edit this text up above so he says, hey, I'm looking for a, a Machamp instead, because otherwise he would just be a darn liar, and I'm not into that. Cool. So now that we've got that already set up, essentially what this does will say, hey, give me a Machamp. So now what we need to do is actually execute the trade, which is where the majority of the work comes in. So essentially, if the index is negative one, that means you haven't chosen any Pokemon. So basically, if you if your index is negative one, You'll say, oh, you don't want to trade? Oh, okay then. Otherwise, if you have chosen a Pokemon, you'll say, all right, let's get started. And then it will run the script command, PB start trade. And this starts doing stuff with those indexes from earlier. So basically it gets index one or PB get one. And then what it does is it trades. So what you need to worry about when you're making a trade is just these three values down here. Essentially, this is the Pokemon you're going to receive from the trade. This is the nickname of the Pokemon. And this is the owner of the Pokemon. So let's name this guy John. Let's make it so that way the haunter he trades us is named... It could just have no nickname. Essentially, if you just leave this empty, there won't be a nickname. So let's just give us a haunter with no nickname. Cool. Right on. And then uh, it'll say the text. And we need to change this text also, because we're not trading him a Ratatata. We are trading him a Machamp. Cool. So now we have a working trade event. Basically, you give this guy a Machamp and uh, you choose your Pokemon. And if the Pokemon you've chosen is that Machamp, then he'll trade you and you'll receive a Haunter named with no nickname from a guy named John. So cool. Let's try that out. It's pretty neat. Let's save the changes and let's get going. Right on. So the next thing we're going to look at, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about while it's loading. Oh, never mind. It's already done loading. But the next thing I'm going to talk about is a more advanced trade. You'll see it, because right now this is pretty basic. It gets the job done, but it's 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 on the basic side of things. So here we go. He says, hey, I'm looking for a Machamp. You want to trade it for my Haunter? Uh, sure. I think I do. I would like to show off this. So now here, when we're choosing our Pokemon, any Pokemon with the species of Machamp is able. Everything else is not able. So as you can see, we have a Machamp, and it is able. So I can hit Enter. And you'll say, all right, let's go. And now we start the trade. So this is the script command where, you know, it starts the PB trade. And then John sends us a Haunter. Yes. I have received a Haunter. Thank you, John. Oh, shoot. And now it's evolving. Very nice. So this is pretty neat. So the way it works is after we receive the Haunter, it does a check, I believe, to see if that was received in a trade. And if it is... You can get a Gengar, straight up. Very good. Very good. There we go. So I traded my Machamp for the Haunter. And he says thanks. And if I try to talk to him again, he says thanks for trading with me. Because it also flips a self-switch. So here we go. Now I have a Gengar with no name. Uh oh, so I messed that up a little bit. By leaving it empty in there, the name of him is empty. 
Okay. That's a little oopsie. But, uh, here he is. Own to John. I think what I need to do is get rid of the, uh, the little, uh, quotes here. And just leave that empty. So that way it won't be an empty name. It'll just be no nickname. But hey, you know, live and learn. All right. So that's our basic trade. Very simple. We gave him a Pokemon. We received a Pokemon. So let's look at a trade that's a little bit more advanced. This one uses a little bit more fields that you have to edit and define. But when you break it down, it's not too crazy. So the, she is looking for a female Dragonair. So this means in this trade, male Dragonairs are not allowed, which is... A little sexist, but okay, lady. And uh, I'll trade her, and she'll trade me a Dodrio. Very nice. So, our PB choose Pokemon function is a little bit more complex now, if we break it down. So, the values 1 and 2 are still here at the beginning, because those are the fields that are being set. So, you don't have to worry about changing those. But now, there are additional features down here that will need to be changed, and these can be a little tricky. And you have to make sure your formatting is right. Oh, and uh, while I'm here, one thing I'd like to mention is you'll notice my text box is quite huge. It's giving me a lot more space to type. It feels very free. Sometimes you'll run into an issue where you're editing one of these and it feels like there's not enough space and you can't type it all out. So if you want to make your text boxes bigger, what you need to do is open one of them and go into your game folder and run extendtext.exe while one of these is open. And then while you're and then for like the rest of your RPG Maker work session, all of these will be big and it's great. So with that said, let's take a look at this. So basically, what this is looking for, if the Pokemon is not an egg, and um, if the Pokemon is Shadow, like they don't want to accept Shadow Pokemon. If its gender is equal to one, and if its species is Dragonair, so gender equals zero is male, gender equal one is female. If the species is Dragonair. So basically, the Pokemon that we trade to a, her has to meet all of these criteria. Otherwise, it won't be accepted. So we can get rid of the gender thing if we want. We can get rid of the Dragonair thing and change that to something else. But essentially, this is a female Dragonair. It's not an egg. It's not a shadow Pokemon. It's just a female Dragonair. Cool. So if you have one of those, you can trade to her. Otherwise, she'll just say, oh, you don't want to trade? Okay. But then when you do start trading, now here we go. Now we can start seeing where it gets pretty complex. Essentially, here's our start trade like before, where um, we just run the trade and it has those three values down there. But you'll notice instead of typing in a Pokemon name, they've typed P here. And then here's the name of the, the nickname of the Pokemon, the name of the person trading, trading to us. But right here, P. What P is, is set right up above by this function. And P is a value, a variable, that they manipulate to make a more complex Pokemon that they trade to us. So essentially, P equals a, uh, a new Pokemon named of species Dodrio. And um, the level of the Pokemon uh, right here is equal to the level of the Pokemon we're trading. But essentially, you could change this to another number. Like, if we want to receive a level 60 um, Dodrio, we could. I'll undo this. Oh, never mind. I guess I can't undo it. All right, we're rolling with it. Right on. And then it'll belong to the trainer. That'll be the person who owns it. Actually, no, that'll be the uh, lady that's training us. Anywho. So we can set the item it's holding. We can make it female. We can set its ability to zero or one or two, depending on how many abilities it has. We can set its nature. We can set its IVs. So, I mean, like, you can get really specific here if you want to have a really complex trade. Um, so you can also change the ball that it's in. You can change the moves it has. And then after you run all of these, you should use calc stats. Actually, you have to, to apply the changes. But yeah, you could teach it surf. You could teach it. Uh, you could teach it four moves if you want. It gets pretty crazy. So yeah, definitely study this event if you want to make a more complex trade. And then after the trade is run, we turn the self switch on. Then on the second page, self switch A is on, and she just says, "Hey, take good care of that Pokemon." Cool. So. These, both of these can be found if you go to your starter maps and you go to Larusian Town and then you go to the Laru Pokemon Fan Club. Here they both are. So if you want to study them further, definitely take a look at them there. So the next two things, or the next three things I'm going to touch upon are these guys now. These people all just give you a Pokemon. And uh, they're pretty short and sweet. I mean, the trades are definitely the more complex subject but here this guy 
just gives you an egg. And really, it's just one function. This function right here called script pb generate egg. This is the species of the Pokemon inside the egg. In this case, it's Togepi. And then just the name of the AI giving it to you. His name is Fan Club President. That's a very long name. But um, this can only work if you um, have a space in your party. Otherwise, it'll throw an error where he says, oh, can't carry it. Make sure you have some space, and uh, then I'll give you the egg. But then if you do receive the egg, he says, here you go. Take good care of it. And um, then it turns that switch A on, and then afterwards he just says, hey, I wonder what it'll hatch into. Very nice. So that's very simple. If you want to give somebody an egg, this is all you need to do. And make sure it's a script command inside of a conditional branch, because you have to check if it happens or if it doesn't happen. Cool. And then last but not least, instead of giving you an egg, these two people just outright give you a Pokemon. So this is the more basic one. This is using a, it's, it, this is very similar to how you receive a Pokemon via an egg, except instead of running the egg function, what you do is you run a function called pb add foreign Pokemon. So then at the start, it's the species. Well, you have to make sure you add these colons, but the species of the Pokemon, and then uh, the name of the the nickname. I mean, sorry, the name of the guy who's giving you the Pokemon, and then the name of the Pokemon. So this guy is going to give us a level 20. Actually, no, there's also a number here for the level. But So yeah, the species of the Pokemon, the level, the name of the guy giving it to you, and then the name of the Pokemon itself. So this guy is giving us a level 20 Shuckle named Shucky, and his name is Kirk. So thank you, Kirk. But yeah, self-switch A on, and then you don't receive it anymore. Very nice. So, very similar to the advanced trade the advanced Pokemon receive modifies a Pokemon. And um, the way that this works is she gives you a Pokemon. In this case, it's a Bulbasaur at level 10. And um, since it's a Pokemon you just received, it will always be at the end of your party. So because of that, they can use this little trick here where it checks the last Pokemon you're in your party and then modifies it. So it'll modify the very last Pokemon in the last slot in your party. And uh, in this case, you know, it'll be the Bulbasaur, and then they'll set its ability, they'll set its nature, they'll make it so it's in a different ball, they'll make it shiny, and then after you run all these, you have to do calc stats to apply the changes. So cool. That's pretty simple. So yeah, I think that's really all there is to cover in this. Like I said before, absolutely, if you have any questions, um, I mean, feel free to ask me, but also go into the Larusian fan club and take a look at them and modify them and tweak them however you want, you know, see see what you can change and what you can get away with. That's, I mean, you 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 can self-teach yourself. That's a weird question. I mean, sentence. You can self-teach yourself a lot of this stuff just by messing around with them. It's pretty fun. So yeah, try try setting up new trades where you, you trade them a Dragonite and you receive a, a friggin' Garchomp. I don't know. You can just mess around with all this stuff. So that's cool. So I think that's all there is to talk about in this video. There is one more thing I do want to talk about, and that is I'm going to be working on a questions and answers video, Q&A. Um, I feel like I've been pretty bad about answering questions lately on both YouTube and Twitter, so I want to get back into doing that. So in this video, in the comment section, if you have any questions you want answered in a Q&A video, definitely, definitely type them in and uh, let me see them. I will try to answer as many of them as I can, or all of them, probably. Um, but it, try to keep them about Pokemon, but you know, if you want to ask me questions unrelated to Pokemon, I'll answer those too. So yeah, I'm kind of excited to do that. And, um, yeah, that'll be like a 2,500 subscriber special thingy, which is a huge milestone. Thank you, everybody. And, uh, yeah, um, other than that, I don't know what else to say. I'll just say, you know, follow on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. I need to get back into streaming. My bad. Oh, <laughs> um, join the Thundaga Discord. And have a great day. Um, I'll see you guys next time. I hope this video helped you. And goodbye. <laughs>